Hello, and welcome to chapter four of Intro to Psychology. In this video, I'll be discussing sleep. Sleep is one of the many biological systems that is governed by a clock. Uh, so just like uh, the menstrual cycle that occurs over the period of a month, uh, or daily changes in body temperature or blood sugar that occur throughout the day, um, sleep is governed by a biological clock as well, uh, called the circadian rhythm. Uh, it's a biological rhythm that occurs uh, approximately uh, every 24 hours, uh, also known as the sleep-wake cycle. No matter where you go in the world, no matter what you're doing, uh, humans have a, a, an insatiable urge uh, to fall asleep and to replenish their energy uh, via sleep. And it's programmed uh, into our bodies uh, and ha has uh, involvement from many different areas uh, of our physiology. Uh, the circadian rhythm uh, governs changes in body temperature, it governs uh, changes in the secretion of certain hormones, uh, it governs changes in uh, electrical activity in our brains, uh, and it is a cycle, so it, it repeats itself in a cyclical manner. Uh, sleep is controlled by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. It's a group of neurons that is located in the, uh, in the hypothalamus uh, and uh, 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 works alongside uh, the pineal gland as well as the uh, brainstem uh, to regulate your body's ability to fall asleep. So when we sleep, uh, uh, several different hormones are released, uh, including growth hormones and uh, sex hormones, uh, as well as, very importantly, melatonin. Uh, melatonin is a hormone that is uh, stimulated uh, by darkness, or, or uh, the release of melatonin is stimulated by darkness, uh, making us sleepy, uh, and it is inhibited by daylight. Uh, so it's one of the most important uh, hormones that is released uh, to allow your body uh, to, to begin the process of, uh, of falling asleep, both from a psychological or a cognitive perspective and from a physiological perspective, preparing uh, the rest of your body for sleep. So uh, that's why many individuals who have difficulty sleeping take melatonin supplements. Uh, and it's also uh, important uh, that uh, people uh, stay are sleeping uh, in uh, very dark environments uh, so that melatonin can be uh, released uh, naturally and stimulated uh, by darkness. Uh, so uh, everyone has experienced sleep, uh, but scientists don't know uh, that much about why uh, it is so insatiable or why this biological clock uh, 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 developed in humans and, and why it's uh, uh, how it came about. Um, there are many physiological benefits of sleep. It helps, uh, helps us keep a healthy weight. Uh, it helps with digestion. Uh, it also helps uh, lower our stress levels and can help with uh, motor coordination. Uh, and very importantly, it has uh, many uh, cognitive benefits, uh, including uh, helping you learn and organize uh, new information uh, to make it uh, easier to remember. In a future chapter, we're gonna talk about memory and the different types of memory uh, and uh, how uh, uh, long-term learning is really uh, enhanced uh, by having good sleep. Uh, we also know that sleep deprivation has uh, in many different effects on the body uh, that can be detrimental, uh, including uh, uh, cognitive impairment, memory lapses, uh, hallucinations, uh, as, well as, as well as physiological things like an impaired immune system, uh, growth suppression because those growth hormones aren't being re released if you're not sleeping, as well as tremors and uh, aches and uh, uh, increased heart problems. Uh, so sleep, uh, even though it's thought of a, as an inactive process, is such an important thing uh, for the body to go through. So we'll talk briefly about the different stages of the sleep cycle. Scientists have established five stages that your uh, brain goes through uh, uh, when you're sleeping at night. Uh, and uh, the stages of the sleep cycle are mainly uh, visualized and studied through EEG, which we learned about previously, uh, which is where you wear a cap and the electrodes uh, capture the electrical activity uh, emitting from your skull. And so uh, in uh, EEG, we often talk about brain waves as well as the, the, the amplitude or the uh, frequency of brain waves. Uh, faster brain waves indicate more brain activity. Uh, and slower brain waves in, indicate uh, less activity. So if we look at this uh, chart on the right, uh, we see that in stage one, uh, is kind of the drowsy stage, the transition between wakefulness and sleep. Um, then in stage two, you get into the light sleep and you can see how the, um, the, the, the waves that are underneath 
uh, change in frequency a little bit. They're, they're becoming a little bit longer. Uh, then in stage three, uh, you get to moderate sleep. And this is where uh, uh, the brain starts to produce deeper and slower brain waves. As you can see here in this diagram, uh, the amplitudes are getting uh, longer. And then stage four, deep sleep, uh, uh, a period that lasts about 30 minutes, um, where, as you can see, the, your brain waves get really, really, really long, uh, and you are in a state that is uh, really uh, the lowest part of consciousness. Uh, and it's in this stage where uh, sleepwalking, uh, people who are prone to sleepwalking uh, typically uh, experience that. And then there's stage five, also known as rapid eye movement sleep, uh, which is a stage in which your eyes are, just as the name suggests, moving rapidly, uh, and uh, the brain is actually active. So in, in this uh, last stage of sleep, uh, you are, your brain, as you can see by the brain waves illustrated in this diagram, uh, uh, the amplitudes get really, really tight, and the frequency of the waves, waves is really, really fast. Uh, and that's because uh, all the cognitive benefits, uh, such as um, taking new information and organizing it and uh, making it easy to remember, are happening during that rapid eye movement uh, stage. Uh, and dreaming also occurs in this stage because of the increase in brain uh, activity. So there's lots of theories about uh, what dreams mean and, and uh, why dreams emerge. Um, this is another area of psychology where there's many theories, but not a whole lot of answers. Uh, so Sigmund Freud uh, saw dreams as a way to gain access to the unconscious. Uh, he described terms such as manifest content, which is the actual content of the dream, and latent content, the hidden meaning of the dream. So with his patients, he was often examining latent content to make uh, interpretations about what their dreams uh, meant. Then there's uh, Carl Jung, who believed that dreams allow us to tap into the collective unconscious, uh, very similar to Freud. Um, but unlike Freud, he believed that certain symbols in dreams ref reflected some universal principles or some universal archetypes. Uh, the current consensus on dream research is that dreams may represent a state of proto-consciousness or pre-consciousness or a type of virtual reality uh, that helps the mind uh, uh, solve problems that they have uh, during uh, consciousness. And I'm going to attach a video on our Canvas page that explains a little bit more about how dreams work. Uh, and this slide, uh, just a brief overview of uh, the different types of sleep disorders. Uh, insomnia, a persistent difficulty in falling or staying asleep. Uh, parasomnia, um, well, which includes uh, unwanted motor or behavioral experiences that occur throughout the sleep cycle, including sleepwalking and restless leg syndrome. Sleep apnea, uh, when people stop breathing during their sleep. Uh, narcolepsy, uh, which is an uh, intrusive um, urge to fall asleep when you don't want to and cataplexy, which is a paralysis of, of the voluntary muscles while awake. So in order to avoid these sleep disorders, um, it's important to get a good uh, regular uh, sleep and maintain the circadian rhythm uh, as much as possible. Uh, for a, uh, adults, uh, for most of the individuals uh, in our uh, class, in our age group, uh, mostly young adults, uh, it's recommended by the National Sleep Foundation that we get seven to nine hours of sleep, and that six is acceptable, um, and 10 to 11 may be appropriate for some situations. Uh, it's hard in our society to get that amount of sleep uh, because uh, of how busy we are, uh, of the frequency of mental illness, and because of the uh, frequency of substances that impair uh, our sleep. Uh, so, uh, here are some recommendations for uh, improving your sleep quality that you can take home. Uh, one, uh, limit your daytime naps to 30 minutes. Uh, napping can take away from uh, nighttime sleep. So it's important uh, that if you are gonna nap, to, to do it uh, um, uh, during the daytime, uh, not close to bedtime, and uh, limit it to about 30 minutes. Uh, avoiding stimulants like caffeine and nicotine close to bedtime. Uh, getting good exercise during the day, except for right before you go to bed. Uh, steering clear of food that can be disruptive before you go to bed, as well as making sure, as we mentioned earlier, uh, that you uh, limit uh, your um, exposure to, uh, to, uh, um, to lights uh, when you're trying to get to bed, uh, but also uh, ensuring that you have adequate exposure to natural light during the day. Uh, and then uh, a very important one is uh, having a 
regular and relaxing bedtime routine so that your mind and your body all know uh, that you are heading to bed. And that can include things like uh, taking a warm shower or a bath, uh, listening to a podcast, uh, doing some stretches, um, and, and really calming yourself down emotionally uh, and making sure that your sleep environment is pleasant.